Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this last but not less important session. The Kabuli chickpeas is always uh, very expected, and uh, I have a difficult role today. As Sudakar passed me the responsibility to try to figure out what's going to be for the following three or four months. Especially, we are going to try to figure out uh, price among our expert panelists today. Uh, I'm going to make a small and quick introduction of uh, the global supply and demand chickpeas in the world. And I will give a brief uh, figures of Mexico and Argentina as I'm uh, really approached to these countries. Later on, we will start with our panels. Okay, to start with, <clears throat> uh, here you have the main uh, origins that originate the chickpeas. And the most important and remarkable thing is that Mexico and India produce uh, the most uh, chickpeas of large uh, size in the world. If you look at the bottom, uh, I have tried to reach to this uh, figure of big size in India. We estimate 200,000 tons of Kabuli chickpeas, 11 and 12 millimeters, plus 75,000 metric tons of stocks. So that would make a total supply of 275,000 metric tons. In Mexico, we estimate 160,000 tons exportable plus 50,000 metric tons of stocks, which makes 211,000 metric tons. So that means the total supply of big size would be around 486,000 tons. On the other side, on the demand side, this is uh, a brief summary of the main consumers of big sizes. And we have come to an average estimated figure of 300,000 metric tons demand. So easily we can deduct that there will be more offer than demand for 2014. Going more concrete into Mexico, these are a little bit more detailed figures of what we expect from Mexico because they have just started harvesting. And as a production figure, we estimate 181,000 metric tons, which makes a total uh, usage of 211 metric tons dropping the, the, the seed and domestic use and adding the, the stocks coming from last year. This is just to show you how volatile the, the, the prices have been for the past two years. This is official uh, prices given from StatPub. But the idea is to, 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 to tell you how volatile this market is and how difficult it is. Going to Argentina, Argentina had a severe drought, as we all know, so they reduced uh, sharply their, their seeding in, 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 in September, October, so they will have only 50,000 tons production, which an estimation, estimation of 40,000 metric tons export. So, the key question of this panel, uh, what is going to be the price of large size Kabuli chickpeas in the next three quarters 2014. So supply of this large size is 486,000 metric tons approximate and we have an approximate demand of 300,000 tons. Do not forget that the main markets have stocks this year. They are not empty as it used to be before. So let's see if our panelists can give us a professional and more concrete approach to this question. So, first of all, I would like you to introduce Sura Basin. He's a partner in mega grain company since 2003, dealing in all kinds of pulses, rice, spices, and food grains. He currently manages the import and export of Kabuli chickpeas. Sura, good afternoon. Can you please talk us about the India supply and demand? Thank you. Yeah, uh, thank you, Mr. Albert. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. To put light on the Indian scenario of uh, Kabuli chickpeas this year, 
what we do is we go in the fields for a crop survey of Kabuli chickpeas and this year we have seen more wheat in the fields than Kabuli chickpeas. As uh, this year being an important election year in India, the farmers have preferred wheat uh, as compared to any other commodity which is uh, uh, sold much more easily and uh, consumed faster. Uh, as we can see the production of uh, Kabuli chickpeas in India is down by 30-35% this year as compared to last year. Uh, coming up to around uh, 400,000 tons to 450,000 tons and uh, there will be a carryover around of uh, 100,000 metric tons of, uh, from last year. So what uh, we do not want to see is what, was, uh, what happened in 2012 when the farmers uh, did not uh, bring substantial amounts of cargo to the markets to sell in the uh, initial stages that in anticipation that they will fetch higher prices later on. But, but actually what happened is that they lost uh, fortunes when the prices went down from $1,800 to around $1,000. And they had to sell all their uh, ca cargo in a panic situation. So learning from their uh, experiences, we hope that they will bring 50% of the cargo in the first uh, six months and uh, in the markets. The prices will also be affected due to the production in Mexico which uh, as uh, Mr. Albert said is around uh, 180 metric ton, 180,000 metric tons and the quantity available for export will be around 190 including the carryover. 190,000 metric tons. In uh, India, the local consumption has uh, gone up to 200,000 metric tons, which will uh, eventually affect the total uh, available tonnage for export to around uh, 275,000 metri metric tons for the bigger town. Prices of the small size Kabuli from Uzbekistan and Russia which were around 450 to 500 dollars will uh, definitely affect the market. The two countries uh, in which India exports the largest quantity that being Pakistan the last year they exported 115,000 metric tons and Algeria which is around 75,000 metric tons. Uh, will uh, definitely decide the uh, major uh, prices this year as Alg Algeria has uh, a normal demand of around 45,000 so they have uh, quite a lot of carryover. Uh, another very important point is the smaller counts in India. This year it is expected that the, uh, there, were, there may be a shortage in the smaller counts due to the uh, smaller crop size. So um, I would like uh, I would like to uh, finish my small wrap up here and uh, hand it over to Mr. Albert. Thank, thank you Sudab. I have a, a quick question. I remember a couple of years ago on the same conclave in Mumbai who were sitting in this panel and the figures look pretty clear. There were experts of India, one of the main uh, exporters, I remember. And suddenly, one month later, we, the world, we were informed that before the conclave, there has been a frost. And because of that, th there would be a shortage of chickpeas. So completely different on, of what was told on that conclave. So as a foreign and as a broker marketing the Indian chickpeas in Algeria and Turkey and Europe, 
what credibility of the data can you give to the rest of the world as, a, as an Indian? Um, at this time, I suppose the harvesting has been completed to a large extent. So only about 10% uh, of the crop initially that was harvested were, was affected by the rains. But we are in a quite uh, safe situation of period right now in, we can, in which uh, we can uh, estimate the crop size. So the figure of the 400,000 tons we are giving here, you are confident it is a right figure? Yeah, four, 400 to 450, yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Our next speaker is uh, Navneet Sain Chabra. He's the director of uh, Shri Shila in Indore. The company main line of business is doing local brokerage, export, and third country indenting of Kabul chickpeas. And the main market serve are Turkey and Algeria. He will talk about one of the main importers of Indian Kabul chickpeas, which is Algeria. Uh, good day to all the uh, present delegates here. Uh, I would like to thank IPGA to give me the opportunity to present uh, and share the information about the Kabul chickpeas here. Uh, I would like to, as per my topic, I would like to uh, share information about Algerian imports from India and from Mexico. Uh, for this, I will uh, make a slides also, but because of the foundation of times, we did not able to present the slides but it should be available on the website of the IPGA. You can check over there. So the main uh, theme is like this. Last year, from 2010 to 2013, 2012, in the three years, Algeria always imports 60,000 or 55 to 60,000 metric ton chickpeas uh, from Mexico, from India, and from other worlds, like from other origins. But in 2013, the Algeria imports are rice, and it should be uh, around 108,000 metric ton, which is around 76,000 metric ton from India, 20,000 metric ton from uh, Mexico, and less 12,000 metric ton from other origins of the world. So Algeria having uh, last year imports is 108,000 metric ton. Uh, so, uh, there is lots of carryover there, like 30,000 metric ton is minimum carryover in Algeria. Uh, so, what uh, the, uh, according to this carryover stocks, we have some questions over there, like, is the low prices, uh, uh, because of the low prices, Algerian imports so much quantity in the past years like this? Uh, and is the demand is increased in the same proportion, like, uh, whatever increase in the quantity last year, but because the demand is not increased in the same proportion, so that's why there is around 30 to 35,000 metric ton carryover in Algeria, what we are expecting. As per Indian scenario, uh, this year India uh, seeding should be done in 400,000 hectares of land, uh, sorry, 325,000 hectares of land. Uh, this year in 2013, and last year it should be more than 550,000 hectares of land. So this year, uh, a short in 35% in seeding, and obvious there is 5% damages in the because of the this, uh, seasons of the weather and all that. So we have crop around 380 to 400,000 metric ton for this year, and 50,000 metric ton we have around carryover, which is almost 90% is big sizes from last year. So the main thing is that where we stand now, we are, every destination is full of uh, uh, quantity, every destination has carryover the stock. So the main thing is uh, this prices where we can go with this information more shared by our panel. Let I pass to Mr. Albert. Thank you very much for this accurate information. What would you recommend to Indian exporters, farmers, brokers, etc., to trade the Kabul chickpeas into Algeria, having said the amount of the stocks they, there are? 
No, I, I did not see, in real, I did not see any demands for the next one or two months, like aggressive demands from Algeria in next one or two months, because they have sufficient stock, and what we are coaching for the new crop, they are selling at the same price in the local market in Algeria. So there is no demands, there are lots of stock, this is the main uh, hurdle. I agree that the crop is less and we are, maybe we are uh, thinking that the price should go up, but because of the destinations are full, we, I am not expecting the huge demands from the destination, even from Turkey, from Algeria, because these are the, our two main uh, importers from India. Thank you. Our next speaker is Murat Ertus. He's 34 year old, acting as international broker in Turkey since 2007. The major product he trades are pulses and rice from different origins. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Today, first, I'm going to talk about the supply side of Turkey. Then I will continue with the demand side. Uh, as Albert has shown you on the figures, Turkey's production for Kabuli is around 400,000 tons. And 80 to 90% of it is 8 mm, I can say. And 10% of this production is mainly is, uh, 10 mm. Uh, and this production goes to, goes to mainly to local market. And 15 to, to 20,000 we export to Middle East. Uh, it's, we think that this is the, the amount that is like uh, the production levels every year, but this year we might have some problems because of the possible drought in Turkey. Uh, of course, uh, goods are not planted, uh, seeded yet. Uh, from, the, from May and June we will start seeing the, how the crop is going to be harvested. Uh, from the demand side, unfortunately I don't have good news for our good friends Indians. Uh, since 2012 October, our exporters are not making good money because of the price fluctuation of the Kabuli chickpeas worldwide, let's say. And Last year, this price in India started from 1100 and it has increased to 1370 levels, CNF Mersin basis. And uh, I think Mexico started around 1430, 1450 levels. And the, I think 900 was the level that was traded in December for Indian. And 1090 levels were, were traded on the last 15, 20 days for Mexicans. Unfortunately, we have lots of stocks in Turkey. Uh, before I came here, I checked with all of our buyers. Uh, the smallest buyer has even like 200, 300 tons of big sizes Kabuli chickpeas. And if, I, if it was like uh, two years ago, I would say this total 30,000 tons of stocks would go in two months, in three months. Because of the drought, there is no rain. There is, it is not getting cold in Turkey. So the consumption is going down day by day. The, cons the consumption of big Kabuli chickpeas are from October to March. And from March, normally, buyers in, Tur in Mersin, uh, they keep their stocks for small, small deliver deliveries. And the, since the consumption is not good, also our key market is Iraq. The, the deliveries are, lot, are very less there. Mm, I don't think that the prices will be able to go, uh, go up and we shouldn't expect Turkey to be in the market for a while. This is what I'm going to say. Thank you very much. Uh, I was wondering how Iraq can influence the reduction of the present stocks in Turkey. Iraq, uh, we used to sell uh, big quantities to Iraq. 
I think we are selling almost 20,000 in a year. But the, the key months that we sell is Ramadan and the 10th month of, I think the October, they, they have special Muharram month, I think. And normally the consumption increases that month, uh, that, that two months. But except that now there is only low demand coming from Iraq. And this, it seems it will continue this way. Thank you very much. Our next two speakers uh, will speak about the small size chickpeas. Uh, first of all, Mohammed Ahmed, who hits uh, Pulse's desk of Amani Group. He has been in business since last 12 years, growing import, export, and indenting business to and from Pakistan. So he, as an expert of Pakistan, he will give us a brief outlook of Pakistan market. Thanks, Al. Good afternoon, everyone. Firstly, I would like to tell you that Pakistan is uh, the biggest importer of Indian Kabuli chickpeas. This year, Pakistan imported 115,000 tons of Indian Kabuli, which is way higher than any other country. Now, the reason what I would like, uh, my, my point would be to tell you what we expect. Pakistan as a country is very price sensitive. If prices are lower, you would see a very high demand, and if prices go up, you will see a vice versa reaction. Last year, I feel, uh, my personal idea is that we imported around 75,000 metric ton of Kabuli chickpeas, and this year is 115. So we have seen an increase of 35% of demand. And the reason is that this was the cheapest Kabuli chickpeas everywhere, anywhere in the world. Like, we, we were buying 60, 62 count out of India, uh, at, at a price which we could have, we, we, uh, if you compare with other part of the world, we could not get even 7 mm at this price. And that is the reason why Indian Kabuli chickpeas has taken over the demand of other 7 mm Kabuli chickpeas. But going forward, what we have seen is that we have seen that prices in Australia, in Russia, other parts of the world have come down looking at the Indian prices. like. We used to buy Australian Kabuli chickpeas at 700 plus dollars, and now we are getting at uh, close to 500 to 530 dollars level. And we have seen Russian prices between 440 dollars to 470 dollars. So if you see that if Indian prices goes up, then we could have again this 35, 40, uh, 35,000 tons or 40,000 tons, which we have seen an increase in demand. This could again go down, and we could substitute to other countries if provided the prices, price and availability is there in other countries. Secondly, I would like to add the consumption months. In Pakistan, the highest consumption month is before Ramadan and Muharram. These are the two highest consumption months for Kabuli chickpeas. Uh, currency is an important factor, but as we import, as we, are, as we don't have any uh, personal production, and we are totally dependent on import, so it, it won't matter, whatever the currency it is, we need, what we need is we need and we should, imp we, 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 we have to import. Thank you. Thank you very much. W w I have a question for you. What is the percentage approximately of the uh, chickpeas going through Pakistan to the neighboring countries in transit like Iran and so on? How important? Well, it's very difficult to predict that because it's not very much documented. But uh, yeah, a lot of Kabuli goes to uh, Afghanistan, out of Pakistan. So um, I would say uh, uh, for 20, 25% of Kabuli coming into Pakistan is going to Afghanistan. And some is also going to Iran, but uh, not much. Thank you very much. Our last speaker is our friend Amin Khan. He's heading Pulse's desk of Tiriaki for the last years. His role varies from leading origination activities in Russia and Turkey to merchandising activities to MA and A, retail business and transit trade to Indian subcontinent. He's going to give us an outlook of the Russian market. Yes, I, uh, I would like to talk about Russia, which, is, which was not the issue five to ten years ago in Kabuli discussions. But the Russian production, Russian output is growing too fast for the last couple of years. Especially last year, Russia had the record chickpeas crop, which is almost 400,000 tons. And the reason 
the, the, the area that the Russian chickpeas are grown in central Russia, and these chickpeas are marketed to international world by either through Turkey or uh, combined with the hand-sized big vessels with yellow peas to India. Chickpeas, the Russian farmers experienced in this short period all the fluctuations of chickpeas market. When they started seeding this, it was $950 FOB, but now they are selling their chickpeas at 300 F 350 FOB. So they experienced the worst. But despite that, despite the falling prices, the area cultivated is increasing. On the other hand, the way they handle the chickpeas from planting to harvest is still behind their world peers. That's why the Russian chickpeas always has got quality issues, mainly the rain damage and the mud damage. But in time, as every farmer in the world, they are going to improve their techniques and they will be offering more quality chickpeas. But of course, they will not be competing with the big size, but they will be competing in small size. And the Russian chickpeas through Turkey, marketed the world through Turkey, mainly to Middle East, because now Russian chickpeas turned into the major raw material of hummus produced in the region. Middle East and Europe. So the major consumption area of Russian chickpeas is hummus producers. The second comes the Indian subcontinent, mainly Pakistan and India. And for Pakistan, it's direct consumption. But for Indian, India, it is a small substitute of Desi. For the for the Russian farmers, chickpeas is a good product because government is not intervened in it like other commodities like wheat. I don't think in the world, or I don't think in Russia, the chickpea export will be banned one day. This will never happen. But one day wheat exports can be banned. So it's kind of exodus for the Russian farmers. What we personally think that in upcoming years, Russia will keep increasing the output, increase their acreage from the central part of the country to other areas, maybe into the Kazakhstan, and we will see more and more small-sized chickpeas presented to international markets. And this will bring a strong competition for small-sized chickpeas of other origins like Canada, like Australia and Argentina. That's all. Thank you very much. So there is no doubt Russia has improved and is a real threat to the countries, like he has just said. So my question is, is there any uh, study or progress in Russia regarding the large Kabuli chickpeas? Are they making any tests? Is there any possibility that they grow big sizes? When prices were too attractive, above 1,000, I heard some attempts that they want to grow large chickpeas up to 9 mm. But I haven't heard a success story yet. But of course, they might try to grow. But if it would be such easy, Turkey would be growing big size chickpeas. Thank you very much. OK, before we start, uh, the debate with, with you, the audience. I would like that each of our panelists gives us their guess following Sudakar tradition about the expected price of uh, Kabuli chickpeas large size for the following three months. Disclaimer applies. I think the price for 40 to 44 FOB basis will range uh, between $880 to $1,000. It will be quite range bound this year. Excuse me, we're talking about FOB, right? FOB, FOB basis. Uh, FOB. Thank you. Uh, my guess is actually 
You know, uh, I totally think that what Mexico uh, doing for the new crop, this uh, for the Indians all depend on the Mexico. But I am thinking uh, the prices should be at the same level or maybe uh, go down. But I am not bullish on the market this year also because of the uh, good supply in the market, even from Mexico, even from India. So again, Mexico is uh, what Mexico opens for the new crop. It is all depend on this. But for India, as of now, I am thinking that the price should remain the same or maybe uh, go down. But I am not bullish. On the next three months, I am expecting that the prices will of Indian Kabuli big size should be between 850 950 level FOB basis I will speak on uh, 60 62 count mm, I personally feel that prices should be in range of 670 to 700 levels on a on a CNF of Karachi basis uh, again my estimate for big size I agree with Murat I think it will be between 850 to 950 FOB base. We will ask the mentalist tonight what's his number. So I invite you to ask these expert people whatever you need to know. And I also invite you to give us your price ideas. So please go ahead. My name is RN Meena. I am representing Central Warehousing Corporation, which is a premier public sector warehousing company in India. My question, or rather uh, request to the panel, is Is there any scope to go for logistics of Kabuli Chana, which is grown mainly in the northern part of the country, by railroad mode from, say, uh, Madhya Pradesh to Atari, go to Lahore, and I am told from Lahore to Istanbul there is already a rail movement available, and how it affects the logistic scenario overall. Thank you. So maybe. So will you please repeat your question? Actually, I don't get. The sound is not reaching very clear here, so if you can make it clear, we will appreciate. Thank My you. question is, see, presently I do not know how the Kabuli Chana is being imported by Pakistan or Afghanistan from India. My view is, can India, or means uh, uh, Pakistan, Afghanistan, this Kabuli Chana can be routed via Atari Vaga border from there up to Lahore, and from Lahore to Istanbul by rail, and in due course from India to Istanbul by rail, border for including cross-border trade up to Iran, Afghanistan, and beyond that. Mm -hmm. Suppose that happens, mm -hmm. then uh, how would it affect the logistics cost vis-a-vis -vis zero? Is it is that feasible? Uh, sir, I would like to answer your question. Yeah. Like what I understand from your question is. You are asking that any possibility from India via, uh, like India to Pakistan via the road, road border, you are asking, yeah. or then via Iran and then via, so it is not uh, uh, practically possible because the chickpeas market is, uh, we are now very facing, every chickpeas exporter is now facing the logistics uh, uh, hurdles in the business, like the destination rates are very high. So the main thing is about the costing, the logistics cost in which way you are asking it is increased too much and it should not be uh, like workable at the destinations at, in this is, as what you are asking. It is not workable like from Lahore, uh, from they are, uh, we are exporting to Karachi and from Karachi all the trades of the chickpeas is going to be done. Then they will transfer it to Afghanistan by local borders. So it is not possible like Karachi to Iran. Iran Sir, I believe you are still confusing. See, we are exporting right now, not even directly to Karachi. The shipments goes to Dubai, comes to Karachi, and then distributed. 
that is the present uh, scenario or understanding or embargo between the two countries. No, Supposing no, it, it happens. Then maybe, it then comes, maybe the shipping line, it should be an answer of the shipping line or the logistics issue, it is not the answer of the like. Why, why I have made this question to this panel is, you are in the trade, you are in this business. Supposing it reduces the overall transaction cost, uh, will it not work? Because government is seriously thinking on these lines to open this uh, border, Atari Waga border, up to uh, cross border trade, up to uh, Turkey. Transshipment. Anyway, thank you, sir. I thank you.